Hello, 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 Sylvia Grace. Welcome uh-huh. to the Well-Centered Woman Podcast. How are you doing this evening? I am doing amazing. I'm just so excited for our conversation this evening. And yeah, I'm just, I'm here for it. Whatever, any questions right. you want to ask? I'm ready. <laughs> All right. Well, you guys, we have here on today the amazing Sylvia Grace. She is the CEO of Sylvia Grace Enterprises, a certified life coach, an inner healing specialist. And so we're going to be diving into that on today. So I am delighted to just have this conversation and we're going to get into it because there's going to be, by the time folks listen to this, they're going to have another intro that they would have already heard before they get to you. So they are here all your deets. But at any rate, at any rate, by way of just really getting started into the conversation, can you briefly share your calling story? In other words, what, how did you get to this calling where you feel specifically assigned to women over 35 who are stuck. What is the story and the journey behind that? Like, I want to reach this group of women. How did you come to that? Oh, that's, I'm glad you asked. That's a great question. Um, in 2015, I had experienced one of the biggest betrayals in my life. Um, it was from a family member. And in the midst of Um, losing my father. Now I'm dealing with betrayal. You know, I always say weddings and funerals bring out the best and worst in people. And his funeral, his death had really um, shined a light on how people really feel. You know, you can only mask your feelings, but so long. Um, And I guess with his passing, it was no longer, I guess they felt, uh, they can be free, right? So now he's not here. Let me show my true colors. So, you know, we know that our parents aren't going to be here forever, right? Mm -hmm. Um, But in the midst of that, I mean, it was just a a series of things happening back to back. Um, I was in a hospital. Actually, my father and I were in the hospital simultaneously. Um, So it was just dealing with that, just being able to process, um, because I know he was back and forth to the doctor. So at that time, uh, we weren't certain what the problem was. So, you know, dealing with my own surgery where I was in um, the hospital for a week, he was in the hospital. Then, you know, eventually um, he transitioned from here. So now it's the grieving, right? Because of um, what transpired with the family member, like in terms of this is a time where we're supposed to be uh, getting together as a family and so much turmoil, so much turmoil um, where I was brought up um, taken to court and that to me, like I, words can't describe how I felt like, so I never really, first of all, I never took, I think I took a day off. So I never prof- properly grieved at the time. So I'm trying to grieve the death of my father. And now I'm dealing with a lawsuit. And like I said, you know, um, betrayal is, it comes in all forms. I think a lot of times when we think of a betrayal, we think of, you know, a, a lover or from a friend, but this was from a family member. So it threw me off. So at this time I was still young in my walk. Like I really didn't understand to be transparent. I thought God hated me because I'm mm. all these series of events that was going on. I'm like, you know, I know we say that he doesn't put anything more on us than we can bear, but I'm like, I was just so broken and um, just kind of want to speed it up. Um, I I didn't understand why things were happening. You know, like it's bad enough. My father and I were extremely close. Um, I'm the youngest. So we always had that bond and not to mention it doesn't hurt that I look like him. So, you know, we just always had that. So again, just dealing with that and and dealing with, um, you know, legal battles all along, not taking the time off of work, still dealing and trying to manage my um, workload as well. Like no one knew what was going on. So I thought I was healed. I had, you know, said I had forgiven this family member. I said it with my head, but I didn't say it from my heart. Well, I thought I needed that to heart. And this is why it's, it's, 
I don't want to say dangerous, but, you know, I would be in a prophetic environment and the man or woman of God to be like, you know, God's going to heal you. And it didn't register until the second or third time. I'm like, what are they talking about? Like, I'm good. Heal what? Like, can you be more? <laughs> what? <laughs> what are we talking about? Like, I'm good. Yeah, I don't wish yeah. they would die. Like, they're good. Like, I pray for their salvation. I'm what good. That that, right. that greasy, that little easy head forgiveness. Come on now. <laughs> right. It sounded good, right? So then mm-hmm. God just really started to deal with me. And as I began closer, because you know, if we if we can just be transparent, how many of us have actually grown closer to God when everything's going good? Because of what I was experiencing, yes, I can talk to people that lost a parent. Like I've had, I have friends that I can call to, you know, and, and ask for comfort, but no one in number two, I was embarrassed. So I didn't share with everyone that was going on. They knew that something wasn't right because I became distant or I was just real surface level. Um, and not to mention, they just kind of figured it out, but some, you know, I told, but I didn't tell everyone. So Again, I'm masking these feelings and we know what you don't deal with will deal with you. So now these feelings are manifesting, right? So now I took on the attitude, well, so much for blood is sticking in water, right? So I had taken on this, um, I want to say I had the guard up, right? Because I right. figured if family can do this, then I'm not putting the past, I'm not putting anything past anyone. So it was in that I needed to really heal. And it wasn't until... As we know, I don't know if well, most people who've ever um, dealt with anything with court, it's, it's long and drawn out. So that pretty much was um, a two year span. So, you know, it was just going back and forth where I was just like, you know what, God, this, whatever, let it be your will. I was willing to start from scratch because just just having to constantly be reminded, like I wanted to move forward, but it felt like I had this over my head, right? And so you so, were stuck. Yeah. Yes. So with that, um, God just really had to do a work in me because now I didn't trust people. I was second guessing you were, if you came into my space, I only allowed you, but so far. So that's, I became stuck in terms of my relationships, you know, God will send people Mm. into your life to be a blessing, you know, uh, covenant sisters or covenant partners, but I have this wall up now because of what transpires. See, when we um, are hurt like that, or we experience trauma, we tend to view things from a dirty lens. So I just stuck because I was broken. And, you know, when you witness betrayal, it affects your self-esteem. It affects your outlook on things. Mm I didn't even have confidence in myself. So with that, um, at the time I had a manager who um, told me that they would promote me and it was just lip service, never promoted. So I began to think, okay, this is how it's going to be. So I didn't really apply myself. So fast forward, it wasn't until I really gave it to God that I really started seeing things manifest now because I was stuck in the position Uh, for three or four years and I knew that I had so much more in me that I knew that I deserved to be promoted and so I came up and partnered with Holy Spirit and was just like I need to be open download some you know ideas strategies to take me to the next level so much that you know I didn't always get it right anything and just with business or when you're when you know that you have God We have to be willing to take a risk. So Mm. there was some risk. Well, I fell flat on my face, but then, you know, my manager saw that I was, you know, making that effort. And if some, they were just like, oh my goodness. I'm like, it was always in me. So because I began to remove. Because you began to heal, you began to get unstuck and you began to take the risk. And so that's kind of what got you into this. Because I'm trying to get at your story in terms of, how you came to be a coach and what got you here and why you're, at, I help women over 35 get mm-hmm. unstuck is because of your own journey of betrayal. I could go a whole way down this whole betrayal <laughs> thing, first right. of all, but you hit on how trauma kind of dirties up our lenses. Once we've been traumatized, it's hard for us to trust, which leads me to, this is a question I had. See if you remember what you said here. Okay. You did a video. 
Okay. On Instagram, March 15th, I got the date. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm going to segue this because I want folks to hear this. And if you're not following her on Instagram, we'll have her, her uh, Instagram information in the show notes so that you can follow her on Instagram. You made this video and you said, the reason why you're not receiving a manifestation, a breakthrough, is because you have plan B on the table when plan A is the only option. And then you went ahead and quoted Matthew 537, let your yes be yes and your nay be nay. And then a nay be nay. Then you said, we don't want plan A because there's a level of sacrifice. There's a level of uncomfortability. We're worried about how it's going to be perceived by other people. But then you said the statement, but with God, there can't be no half stepping. When it comes to God, you put all your eggs in the basket. Now, going back to what you said about being stuck, when you've been traumatized and when you've in this inner healing journey with God, it's hard to trust. It's hard for you to put all your eggs in God's basket. It's like, God, I'm gonna give you these two eggs, but I still got four eggs over here unless you don't come through, right? And so when you've been disappointed, when you've been betrayed in relationships and business, how, so as an entrepreneur, as a faith-based entrepreneur, as a woman of influence, how are you personally learning? how to put all your eggs. I mean, there's a reason why you had that word and felt compelled to share that. Oh, I yeah. want to know your journey. Like, when did you try to give God two eggs instead of all the eggs? And well, how you how, did, how would you tell someone? What does that look like practically? Well, I'm glad you asked because I felt that so strong in my shundo. Okay. <laughs> um, just even how I came to a life coach. I initially was certified just as a life coach. And it was, it was, I still had the demographic 35 and older. I chose that because I'm over 35. I figure you're 35, you know, experience some betrayal, death, loss of a job, loss of a loved one, you know, so that kind of encompasses you. I don't want to say you have um, a level of maturity, but to, to some extent, you've, you've experienced life. And I chose those areas because I was stuck in each one of those areas. So I initially was a life coach because I was, wasn't sure how to segregate, okay, this is church, this is ministry and this is business. So I felt compelled that, um, you know, later, I don't know how much time, maybe a year, year later, um, I decided to go the route of inner healing because a lot of times that is the root. You know, people are stuck, but they don't understand why, where there is fruit, there is root. So there's manifestation of why you're stuck, but people aren't sure how to get to the root or essentially how to get unstuck. So God just kept pulling on me, kept pulling on me. And it really caused me to be transparent. And um, a while ago, maybe like a year ago, I was doing segments, Transparent Tuesdays or Transparent Thursdays. And it really was anytime you're in, you know, being on an entrepreneur and being on social media, you know, you're opening yourself up, you're allowing people into your lives where, again, I'm like, okay, I'm private, like, you know, I don't want people to know, but people can respect and have that level of authenticity because they know when I'm speaking, I'm speaking from a place that I've walked. So it's easy for me to tell you do X, Y, Z, but I can give you practical tools, but what I think it just adds more value and validity because I've experienced those places as, as myself. So I decided, you know, I gave God my yes, because he said, you know, yes, it's going to cost you, but what I have on the other side is greater. When we give God our yes, we can't say, okay, I'm going to give you two right here. We have to see all or none because, and that was my all, right? Because I wanted to stay in the safe zone as life coach. Okay, we're going to deal with these areas, but mm -hmm. the root of it is inner healing. So I had to go all and be open and be transparent and allow myself to be vulnerable so others can heal. I hate to see people stuck. I hate to see people yeah. in the area because I was stuck for so many years and didn't even yeah. know I was walking around bleeding until I was, you know, around the prophets and they're like, here, I'm like, I'm good. You? Yes. Yes. So you're, way, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. So you're saying you're, but for you, from a practical perspective, putting your eggs in your basket meant all of your eggs in God's basket. In this particular uh, illustration, me means that you were 
just didn't want to be a life coach. You had to 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 merge the the ministry aspect, the inner healing part as well, and you couldn't just hide behind being a life coach and keep it tied up in that. To me, it sounds like putting all your eggs in God's best in God's basket instead of holding back some. Sounded like. I got to put myself out there and be transparent and authentic with my testimony. And I want to be private, private and closed. And like I've told people before, you can't help people and hide out at the same time. It's like, I want to help people. God, use me, Jesus, use me, use me, Lord, but right. let me hide. I don't want to take pictures. I don't want to go live. I don't want to be out there, but Lord, I want to help somebody. Well, to, yeah, <laughs> you can't help and hide, but so much you, you're going to have to come out. Right. Yeah, precisely <laughs> because we can't say, I mean, how many times do we say, God, use me? We say it with our heart, but not necessarily, I mean, with our head, but not with our heart. When he says, okay, give me all your back, give me all your eggs. See, we want to give what we feel is safe, right? And kind of like, all right, I'll give you that. And we just, he can't, we have to be open to what he wants to do. We don't get to choose how he gets to use us. If you truly want to see the manifestation of God, you have to know, yes, and I took hits, I took hits, you know, because when you mm. um, allow yourself to be um, transparent, okay, you have judgment, right? But we Can you share to- that? Can you speak to that? Or can you speak to those feelings, especially when you have trust issues, because like I said before, it's hard to put all your eggs in God's basket when -hmm. you've been traumatized. Can you share in your journey as a female entrepreneur, as being out here in these social media streets, like Mm -hmm. a time where you may have got in your feelings because somebody judged you or looked at you sideways or this, that, and the third happened, and how you partnered with Holy Spirit to kind of get past it because see this is the well-centered woman podcast we're about how to manage our emotions as we're navigating so how what were your emotions like when you were you said you've taken some hits yeah because you know the enemy would love nothing more for you to um he comes to kill steal and destroy right Mm -hmm. so he wants you to keep those those things um hidden so i had um a young man um say you know as he was correcting me and I'm all for open feedback but I feel that there's a way to have that dialogue right could it inbox me and I forgot what he's what he said essentially but he was critiquing like oh you should have did um I had did a reel on how to know you need uh inner healing and he said you know you could have spoke more slowly and I forgot what he said he said a couple of things and um I guess what I was saying was not biblical. And so I had to wow. just kind of take a step back and I'm like, okay, this is not, um, clearly he doesn't know his word, you know what I mean? But we have to have a level of emotional intelligence because in my flesh, I'm really like, sir. <laughs> <laughs> he wanted to tell him a thing of three. <laughs> <laughs> but I had to regroup, you know, I had my you moment. You had to regroup. But, um, yeah, because at the end of the day, I never want to ruin a witness or ruin that's a soul. We have to see people as spirits, right? Yeah. Because it's so easy to get in your flesh where, you know, clap back. But I had to realize too, especially sometimes people would do stuff just to get a reaction. So anytime with that, you have to just be open and not react off of your flesh because now you've ruined a potential witness. And at the end of the day, you know, Jesus was persecuted, but we have to keep our eyes on the prize and know that, you know, as long as God before me, then who be against me? Amen. Amen. I love that. I love that. And because of who we are and what we represent and because you have on your name, you're, you know, an inner healing and deliverance coach. Now Mm -hmm. that by virtue of what you do implies that you would have greater emotional resiliency, mastery, capacity, Mm -hmm. and all of that because that's what you're dealing with. So for you to right. do the clap back and go off on him, he'll be like, yeah, right. I knew it. See right. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you have people that are yeah. just waiting yeah, for yeah, you to, yeah. to get under your skin as well. So. Yes, and so we're out here, you know, learning how to lead, um, walking in our healing as we do God's work and, and be entrepreneurs. And so another question that I wanted to ask you 
you did and i love how you do the grace points you have your grace points out there on instagram like she's playing on her name grace point number one <laughs> two three and so guys if you go out to her instagram you know she gives these grace points and so grace point number nine mm -hmm. i did look at that i like it you said <laughs> you will pay in the beginning or in the end which one do you choose right and then you said anything worth having goals or achievements comes with levels of sacrifices you will either put in the work on the front end and or it will come up on the back end typically when it's made on the back end you're, you're playing catch up so ideally it's best to make the sacrifice in the beginning so that you can enjoy the fruits of your labor either way you're going to pay so you're going to pay on the front end or the back end so which way do you want to pay so the question i have for you because i really love this but can you share Mm -hmm. With our listeners, a time where how you walk this out, where there was a time where you know you should have paid on the front end, but you paid on the back end. Or how, how did you partner with the Holy Spirit to go fix that? The Lord had really been placing upon my heart to do the grace points. Mm. And so I was just like, because um, again, it was a level of, it, it takes time. It really takes time. Um, because sometimes, you know, as an entrepreneur, I don't always feel creative. I don't always feel creative. And so what I was doing was just kind of doing them sporadically. Or actually, I started inboxing people, like whoever, however the Holy Spirit led me. Wow. I would just send them to, you know, a certain group of people, right? So at least, like, at least if they don't agree, then nobody knows, <laughs> you know? So, but then I was just like, no, Lord was like, that's not what I told you to do. So, you know, I had to kind of gain momentum because now I'm trying to play catch up where I did, you know, we know partial obedience is still disobedient. Mm. So I needed to really just um, be open, you know, because I also post them on my Facebook page as well and try to play catch up. So now that when, you know, we have to be able to be sensitive to God's timing. And so now I'm trying to catch up and gain momentum that I've lost by not initially being obedient because mm. I wanted to do it my way. And again, it was still mm. kind of like wanting to hold, still wanting to hold on to that. But um, eggs in that basket, I tell you. <laughs> and you said in your video, ain't no half stepping with God. So you're telling me that you try to half step on your grace points. So I when did he tell you to do your grace points? At the beginning of the year? When, when did he tell you um, to first do them? When did I start them? Uh, like last year, I want to say beginning of last year. A beginning of 2021? Yes, ma'am. And we're, we're just now seeing grace points in 2022? No, no, no. I think I started toward the end of, uh, I think I started going into 21, um, 22. So it was like October-ish. It was still later than what he told me, but um, I did start in 21, but it just wasn't when he told me to. <laughs> But I, yeah, I love that whole analogy because you, you got me to thinking, you know, and for, for those of us who, those who may be listening to this, it's better to go ahead and do it up front what God called you to do yes. so that you're not backtracking. And then, you know, I wonder what blessings we forfeit when we don't do stuff when we first have that initial instruction. Like how many grace points would you have compiled by this point? Could they have been turned into a book? Could there have been a whole series of those? What yeah. what could have been done with those grace points by this? Because yeah. you would have had several hundred by now. Right. Well, funny you should say that because one of the times I just had, God has been dealing with me and I'm being transparent to do a book. When I was typing, when I was doing one of the grace points, I'm like, this is a whole book because Instagram gives you a considerable amount of space, you know, character yeah. space. And it said that I exceeded <laughs> the amount of, um, but the thing is when, you know, Holy Spirit takes um, total control, it was just, I was just writing, I was just writing and didn't realize I was running out of space. And I was just going back and looking like, this is a whole book. And so that that's coming, <laughs> that's coming. Um, it was something too that I, you know, definitely need to be obedient because, you know, there's so many people that are just hurting, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. There's so many people that are hurting and I just, just hate to see people um, stuck and not knowing how to get out of that because 
um, I was there and it doesn't feel good. No, it, it doesn't. doesn't. How do you feel? So it's a lot of women of God that are, and I guess the pressure of social media, it's a lot of pressure, a lot of um, comparison. You need to be mm-hmm. doing this, this, that, and a third on your Instagram, on Facebook, you know, all of these things, boss babe, hustle. But a lot mm-hmm. of us are out here hustling and we're not healing. And that is the importance of the work that you do. Can you speak? to that, the importance of how, how do you navigate that process of, okay, I'm an entrepreneur. I'm a, I'm a woman of God. I partner with the Holy spirit, but I still have stuff in my heart, but I still want to do my purpose. I want to be obedient to God. I want to write my book, start my business, start my nonprofit, do these different things. I, how do I balance that in terms of my own healing process? Cause there's a part of, there's some that think don't do anything, sit down and have several seats. And then there's those that say, get out there and continue to work while you heal. I'm of the belief that there's a, there are times where you might need to pull away a little bit, Mm -hmm. but you never get fully out. I also believe that while you're in the process, that God heals you as you go. And for me, I've, I've, I've erred on the side of jumping out too fast as opposed to sitting down. So what is your perspective? What has it been like for you? What do you see? And what do you think about that? Well, I think um, to speak to what you said um, before, um, we have to realize that in, in <clears throat> with regards, <clears throat> excuse me, to comparison, mm. we definitely can't compare ourselves because God has assignments for each one of us. You know, some of us, you know, and I love what you do because you're dealing with the, the healing as well, right? Yeah. So, you know, we both kind of do similar things but in terms of healing, right? We're passionate about seeing women heal, but now your focus is more so on, you know, relationships, right? So, you know, number one, and that was my thing too, why I forgot to mention um, with the life coach, I'm like, there's thousands of life coach guy, like call me to yeah. do something else. <laughs> like, you sure yes. <laughs> but just really staying focused on what God called you to do. And as I shared with you earlier, you know, God told me to step away and take a break um, from social media. So, you know, as I told you, I'll be back, you know, um, May 1st, really knowing, and I was just like, I'm going to lose momentum because we know that with um, Mm -hmm. Facebook and the algorithm and, you know, Instagram, like I still haven't mastered it, but I have to be obedient to what God says. And because it's easy to get burnt out because we're managing, we're wearing all these different hats. So just know that if God's told you to do it, he's telling you for a purpose, because sometimes we need to, excuse me, when you're pouring, 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 you need to be poured back into, you need to have that alone time. And just think of when, you know, God has stepped away from the disciples and went into the mountain to pray alone. Sometimes we just need to reconnect with him and just have that, excuse me, that alone time with him. So just really, really trying to, um, unplug and then you come back you come back stronger but just knowing when you need that and to answer your question we're going to always work on ourselves until Jesus returns we're never going to get to the point where I arrive right Mm -hmm. but I don't believe in leading while bleeding excuse me to a certain degree but you know if you know that you may need healing in certain area allow Holy Spirit to do the work in it as long as it doesn't taint your vision and you're speaking from not speaking from a place of bleeding and again, depending on what it is, you can still go forth in your business or go forth in what is what you're doing while working on your healing. As long as you're working toward that and you're not bleeding on the people, but you have, this is why we have to have wise counsel. So you know you're not bleeding on the people as you're healing, because we're always going to continue to work on ourselves. We'll never get to the point where we arrived. Amen. Amen. So I hear from you that there are times where you need to pull away so that you pull apart so that you can come back better and stronger. And if you are going to be out here, like they say, hustling, which I don't even like that term, but if you (laughs) are going to be out here, then number one, it depends on the nature of the nature of your trauma, the nature of what's going on with you. And 
to be very careful that while you're leading, while you're out here making things happen, you're moving and grooving, you're in your calling, you're in your purpose, you need to make sure you're not bleeding and hurting other people in the process. Right. So that means you need to be getting your therapy. You need to be getting connected with a coach. You need to be in some if group coaching, a therapy, a coach coach like yourself or myself, but you just can't be out here winging it, right? You need to have some type, some level of self-care and be in that process. So mm -hmm. we're going to continue along. Let me think here. I had other questions here. I love it. Keep it coming. Yeah. All right. I wanted some concrete examples here. Can you share a time in this journey? So how long have you actually been a life coach in the certified life coach? Uh, two years. So right when that was another excuse I used to, I'm like, this is in the <laughs> thick of the pandemic. The pandemic hit um, March of 23 of, of 2020. And I think I had just became certified February of March as a life coach. Okay. So I'm like, okay, so in the midst of trying to, you know, as companies weren't, none of us, as well as the companies were prepared for that. So I'm like, okay, now what, where am I? Um, nine to five, my workload had tripled. Wow. So I'm like, I have this certification and can't really focus and give the attention and ease because now I'm working 12 hour days, 16 hour days. So it was definitely during a time where I'm just like, Really? You what? <laughs> uh, wow. So you've been a life coach, but you're also an evangelist, right? Yes. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. So I'm sure you've been that longer than a life coach, right? Yeah. You know, it's funny because you're walking in your calling before you are come on now. Realize it. Um, so this is why, again, we need to have wise counsel. Like I knew pretty much um, God has given me the grace to be able to evangelize in, in um, the Middle East, um, South America, and um, uh, the Caribbean. So again, seeing people hurting, you know, it's just always, it's just funny how a lot of people too, and I know that's always a question, well, what is my purpose? You're probably already walking in in your purpose and don't even realize that. But yeah, I was already walking in the office of an evangelist and didn't even realize. I think I was uh, confirmed maybe three years ago, three years ago. But I was always already I had been on mission trips since 2016 or 17. So, but I was affirmed. Um, later yeah. on as well as a minister as well so yeah, yeah so the fruit was there before you even knew the had the official title that is so true and in that journey of even you know being officially titled an evangelist but before that you were doing the work of it and then now coming to your life coaching certification in all of that that whole journey of okay I'm I'm going to start this business as a life coach and do this. Were there any times where you got in your feelings or really made some type of a faux pas of some sort where you didn't really obey that little small voice and you kind of got in your feelings? And how, how, what did it cost you and what did you learn? If you are able to share an example. Um, I don't so much getting in my feelings, but sometimes I have to realize, um, because again, my heart, I want to see everybody healed. Yeah. And um, a person, a woman that God had reached out to me and uh, said she wanted a session. So I like to do discovery calls just to make sure it, it's a good fit. Because when you're dealing with inner healing, there's a fine line between healing and sometimes people like I'm not by any means a cert, uh, therapist, a therapist like or a counselor so I make that clear so I like to have that discovery call to make sure this is something that's you know beneficial for the both of us and that be able to help anyway long story short so we had the discovery call and I said you know um this is more of a mentorship I think you need more of the mentor as opposed to the healing because it was a lot of things she didn't know so there was a lot of distractions. I mean, my, my discovery calls are 15 to 20 minutes. Um, something I forgot when I spoke to her the first time, I think she had forgotten or she really couldn't talk. So I agreed to speak with her another time. I spoke with her for almost an hour. 
So I advised her, you know, this is what my recommendations. And she said that, um, you know, she would get back to me. And so, you know, fine. I forgot what date or whatever, but she wanted to move forward. Um, fast forward, I did follow up with her and um, never heard anything back. And when I spoke with my, because um, I, I really do, I want to help you. I really do. And sometimes yeah. I have to be able to separate business because I wanted to do it, to be honest, I wanted to, because she really didn't have the groundwork. Like she was a babe in Christ, like just really wanted to assist her with that. Because I know for me, when I was saved, I'm like, now what? Like I exactly. didn't have a mentor kind of coaching me. So anyway, I wanted to do it free. I wanted to my spiritual, don't you do that <laughs> Wow. I'm glad I didn't tell her. But anyway, like, I think I went over beyond only for her not to even follow up. And so I'm saying that to say, like, we have to be able to, and that's a problem when you have um, ministry as business mm. in a sense. But I had to really, I'm glad I did listen to my spiritual father because some people don't respect what's free sometimes. When you don't have any skin in the game, you know, it's just kind of like, and I know she saw she was still young, a lot to learn, but just again, separating ministry from business. Now, are, there are times when God may lead you to do something for free, but you have to be able to discern and just thank you, Holy Spirit. It just reminded me of <clears throat> when um, God told him that he was going to the cross and, and, G, and Peter was like, no, never. And, he, and Jesus said, get behind me saying, Peter had good intentions, right? So from someone who, I want to say from the naked ear or someone who, um, from, a serious, from a carnal standpoint, you're like, oh, he just didn't want to see Jesus suffer. But from a spiritual standpoint, Jesus was able to discern the spirit that was operating in that. So, you know, a lot of times we can mean well, but we have to be able to discern when to, you know, keep it business or when to, because God will lead you to do things free. So I had to. That is so good. That is, that's a big deal. That's yeah. huge. I mean, we could go another 30 minutes down that direction, like really discerning that. And sometimes, yeah. you know, I can see the value of building up your skill set in terms of coaching people by offering, but even then you got to hold them accountable. So right. this is a tidbit for those of you who are listening, who may be coaches, like have a contract, have a pro bono contract. Like this is free, but this is the value of it. I'm giving you a thousand dollars worth of coaching services for free, but you got to show up and do your work and you're going to sign here that you're going to show up for it. And you want to give me a great testimony for it. That's my payment, that testimony. This is free for somebody. That right. way that there's some type of a skin, there's some type of an accountability Correct. Correct. with it, right? Accountability, that's the key word. You know, but people, you're right. You're you're absolutely right. They won't value the free. And I was listening to something the other day. Um, today, it was today, not the other day, but um, Minister Toure Roberts, uh, Sarah Jakes Roberts' husband, he yes. said, my yes is expensive. Girl, I, I still need to chew on that one. I got to my, I know my yes is expensive. So what does your yes cost you when you're sitting when someone says that they're going to show up uh, for the call and you're still sitting there on a free consultation and they haven't showed up for it? They, right. they, they're not even saying yes to themselves, but wasting your time because your yes is your time, your availability, your energy, right. all right. what you bring to the table. Your right. yes is expensive, Sylvia. Yes, it is. Yes, and so, is. my God, we can go down that one. And so, yeah, I hear like you get your, you really want to help people. And so that's a whole process of guarding your heart as a coach. How do you do that? How, how do you keep those boundaries? Um, well, that your was heart is so big to help people, you know? Right. Um, that was the lesson learned. And I think just anything being an entrepreneur, um, you're going to have some ups and downs. You're going to have some valleys and you have to really, you're going to make mistakes. Like there's no, I mean, people can give you the foundation for entrepreneurship, but essentially you have to learn by putting yourself out there. Of course, understanding, you know, being ethical yeah. now, I'm not telling you to do something outside of, <laughs> you know what I mean? But it's willing to take risks. But again, just this is why you have to constantly stay in his face and to be sensitive to 
um, Holy Spirit because that the red flag in that situation was now if she's not even um again not respecting the fact that it's free and making the time where um and, and not making excuses for people i forgot whether what her what the uh issue was with the first call um uh, but again me extending it and even going over and beyond that was a red flag right there so just really being sensitive to the holy spirit because when he shows you those red flags, like, wait a minute, wait a minute, you know, but like you said, definitely having boundaries at all um, stems from having boundaries because people tend not to respect what's free. That's right. That's right. And they give off red flags to let you know. And sometimes, uh, like I've said before, the red flags are wagging in your face like a big old red blanket. <laughs> we, and we still they just flapping like really big in your face. And somehow we still manage to overlook them. Right. right. So it's just so important. So let me ask you this. What is the biggest challenge that you're facing in, in your business or this current place that you're in right now, right now, and how are you tackling it? What is your current challenge right now? That's a great question. The biggest challenging um, challenges that I'm currently facing is to being able to um, uh, juggle my time. This explain I still work <clears throat> a nine to five. I'm yeah. still in ministry and I have my business outside of my personal life. So there's only 24 hours in a day and making sure that there's a balance that, you know, I'm being able to uh, move efficiently in each one, you know, and everything, nothing's falling by the wayside. So just really being intentional about having that balance and putting boundaries in place as well, because, you know, when we allow things you know, everything that is a good idea is not a God idea, right? Mm. And it can take you away from, he's like, oh, I told you to do X, Y, and Z. Yes, it's God, but there's a timing for everything. That's why we have to be sensitive to the Kairos moments as well. Mm -hmm. So again, it's, it's finding that balance because there's times where like just even, um, I will have to take work. I try not to take work home, but there are times where I'm working on something. There's peaks and I was, working on an analysis and it was something I needed to look for. So now this is taking away from what I already had planned. So really finding that balance and juggling and wearing all these different hats. I hear you. I know exactly what you're talking, talking about. And one thing, one recurring thing that I see with you, Sylvia, is the timing and being sensitive to the Holy Spirit. You've said that like a dozen times. So it's like really keeping your ear and that's how you're able to navigate this whole Correct. trying to balance and figure out what you're, you know, hearing from God, where I should be here, because that is the key to balance because he's going to show you how to show up in every situation. And so that's what I'm hearing from you. That's yeah. how you're, that, that's your challenge, but that's how you're handling it. Is yes. right? Yes, yes. Right. Yes. Good. Good. <laughs> All right. And we're going to bring this to a close, but I still have a couple of more questions. Okay. If you could go back mm -hmm. and give your 18-year-old self, 18-year-old Sylvia, one piece of advice, what would it be? Um, I think it would be uh, not to be concerned of what others think, you know, at 18 years old, or just even those teenage years, you know, we want to, well, I don't say be, I can only speak for myself, you know, you want to be able to, um, you value other people's opinions, to a certain degree, um, yes, you think for yourself, but you know, it was just kind of like not being concerned of what other people say and just move forward. Um, I remember like I've hmm. always kind of, I want to say not, March, March still would beat up a different drum, but sometimes you want your friends to approve of X, Y, and Z. So really not to be concerned of the opinions of others. Yeah, that is so good. That's a big deal because when you're 18, you want to fit in and you want to be liked and you want to be a part of the clique. Right. But now There's looking back, college. yeah, yeah. but now you look back on it, it's like God created you to be authentically you. And the more authentically I walk as who I'm called to be, the more authority, the more confidence, the more I'm comfortable in my own skin. So do you feel like at the age you're at now, you way more comfortable 
in your skin as a woman. Right. Yes. Because I know whose I am and I yeah. know that despite, um, what others may think, I know who God's called me to be. Like I no longer look at things, um, or identify, identify myself as an orphan, um, because mm. know that when we give him our yes, now we're accepted into a royal priesthood. So definitely different than my 18 year old self, because I'm one, I wasn't walking with God. So, you know, I think to me, like even being as a freshman, that was challenging because, okay, you're trying to find your, uh, not niche, but who, who your group of people are, you know, because you have people from over here, you have people. So just finding where I fit in. So Whereas when you show up and be your authentic self, those that are called to you and just even what I do and even what you do, those who are called to your voice are going to come to you. So you don't have to follow the crowd or do it like this person because God has given you your lane. Not that we can't, it's good to stay abreast of what, you know, what's going on in the things today, but God will allow you to, he's called you to do what you're supposed to do and that we want to be obedient to it. Amen. 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 I hear what you're saying. When we, we are only assigned, the people that are assigned to our voice will only hear us when we are authentically ourselves, authentically ourselves. So good. And this is the Well-Centered Woman podcast and centered means to be balanced at peace emotional and spiritual equilibrium. So what is the number one daily practice that you have as a well-centered woman of God that you are, because you are, that Mm -hmm. keeps you centered and sane? You're working a full-time job as a financial analyst. You're an evangelist. You have ministry responsibilities. You're building this life coaching business. So what is the one thing that you do that you know keeps you rooted, grounded, centered, and sane so that you're not losing it and falling apart? What is that? Um, I really, when we tend to feel overwhelmed or anxious, it's because we haven't given it to God. So I start my day with just giving him thanks and not losing sight of what he's called me to, you know, because if I had it my way, I would still be behind the, you know, <laughs> behind the camera. You know, it's so funny because I was just fine. Like even when, um, just even with ministry, I'm like, I was just fine. It's going to church, being a church you know, goer. And, but that's not where he's called me. So just understanding that when I start to feel overwhelmed, then something's off balance. And so just really getting in his face and staying in his presence and just knowing um, that I asked for just for him to overwhelm me with his peace, you know, and because when we start to feel like that, there's no balance. So I like to start off my day with just giving him thanks and just meditating on his word and just give, you know, starting off with declarations as well. That's awesome. Uh, when people hear this, they need to catch that. You start your day off in his presence and worship and in praise and in meditation and in thanksgiving. That is yeah. so, so critical. And so, on days, you know, if you free, if for whatever strange, bizarre reason, you take a notion to just hop up out of bed and skip that, how would your day be? Off centered. <laughs> Off centered. I mean, um, I mean, have you okay. done that and felt it? Yeah, because there's times where um, I've overslept, right? So now I'm hustle and bustle. Um, where now I'm trying to gain, I definitely felt off balance and I know that something is missing, right? So even if it hits me when I'm at my desk, like I knew something was off. So, but even if I have to, like if, if I'm working remote then it's, you know, it's easier for me to gain balance and get centered again. But if I'm in the office, you know, I'm even just giving him thanks in the car. It's, it's not ideal because I, I need that alone, quiet time. So now I'm distracted because when you're driving, you have all these external um, mm-hmm. things. But just, yes, I definitely feel it when I don't give him my first fruits. <laughs> no Amen. Those first fruits of the day is what yeah. keeps you centered and sane. Amen. Yeah. Very good. And we're getting ready to close this out. So tell us about any your latest projects, what you have going on, your services, offerings, and where people can find you and connect with you. Okay. So I'm um I did it last year and like I said, because I'm 
definitely um, called to people that need inner healing. Um, I will be doing um, a six week course on inner healing. So people, you know, I think it sounds so, I don't want to say cliche, but we kind of know what inner healings, but just really walking you through those steps. So um, you definitely want to stay connected. You can uh, find me on Instagram at Sylvia Grace and the number five. Um, on Facebook, you can find me either Sylvia Grace Enterprises, that is my um, business page, or just Sylvia Grace, that's my um, profile. Um, so it's Sylvia Grace. Uh, but definitely stay connected because um, I have some exciting um, things that are coming up and, you know, definitely we, who can't use encouragement, you know, and I definitely try to be diligent in um, whether it's reels, whether it's the grace points in encouraging, because we all need to be encouraged. I, I don't think there's, you know, people used to get on Joel Osteen and say, oh, he's more of a, um, of a, a motivational speaker. Okay, well, who can't be, who doesn't want to be motivated? Exactly. It, it, exactly. That's what it is. You know what I mean? I always welcome encouragement. So, yes, you can find me on there as well. So, I'm just, um, and also, excuse me, on um, YouTube as Sylvia Grace as well. So, definitely would love to have a conversation with you all. And um, I'm just amazed at what God has, where He has brought me from. Um, from where I started and just even walking through my own healing, because with inner healing, there is a level of transparency, transparency, vulnerability, authenticity, and just really being honest. And that's why I love your platform because get real and get healed. We have to be honest about our feelings because mm -hmm. as long as you play victim, you, I can go down a whole nother road with Come that. on now. That's right. That's right. Just get real, be healed. As long as I'm, sh I call it shucking and jiving, uh, putting stuff under the rug, um, trying to fake the funk. And right. it's like, I didn't really begin to heal until I got really honest about yeah. where I was. And that's a daily process. It's always something God will always reveal something to us yeah. about <laughs> us and even when we're in the entrepreneurial journey because like I said I don't feel like in all honesty this is a transparent moment right here for me I don't feel like I'm all the way completely like out I feel like there's I'm still hiding too mm -hmm. like I got a podcast I have a whole Instagram I have a whole YouTube but there are parts of my life that's still not fully you know because like you said you feel like you need to put everything out there but it comes in layers as you're yeah. ready you have to use wisdom you have to use wisdom and like uh, until you have complete what I want to say until you regain certain territories of your life completely or until there are certain areas of your heart that's still tender or still sensitive in this type of a work in inner healing and deliverance work you got to have that for yourself and secure that victory and secure that inner territory of your own heart and mind before you can effectively reach back and help somebody else i oh, know you know what i mean i don't need like say for instance i'm trying to you're not going to see me out here teaching and preaching on how to get a husband because i haven't <laughs> i'm not remarried yet Right. I'm not going to sit out here and do a webinar and a master course on, on marriage prep. Now, I could give you some pretty good wisdom based on what I know. I could get you somewhere now. But until I'm, I got the ring and I'm walking down the aisle and we've been married for a minute and it's healthy and strong, you're not going to see me out here talking and teaching on making bandstands and grandstands. But what you will see me do is I can tell you how to get out of a dead end relationship. No, I, I will, I will. But you see what I'm saying? That's the that's the thing about the work that we do. Yeah. You know, there are certain areas that you can teach and talk and walk people through, like being betrayed by close family members. You could probably right. teach that, you know, to the cows come home is what I want to say. That sounds so country. <laughs> <laughs> but I, but you know, or there are certain areas where you're not going to be teaching right. and talking on until you've mastered or until you have victory in that area. Do you? You know? Right. I definitely agree. And I think one of the biggest that I see as women, um, and, and this is all ethnicities, mm -hmm. is a lot of times when we're, um, and this is why I'm not mad at any of my exes, because we have to take accountability for the role that we played. 
we can't, yes, that was wrong. They cheated on you or betrayed you or whatever it was, but what role did you play? Well, come on, somebody. That's why I love when you say get real. Until you take that stance, as long as you're pointing the finger, you will never heal because this person did that, this, 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 this. Okay, but what role did you play? That's why we can't look at ourselves as victims. We are victors. And and, and that comes with the level of maturity. Listen, I didn't always be like, okay, I did this. No, (laughs) this comes with wisdom. This comes with maturity to see, you know what? Especially when you start seeing these cycles, you see Mm. these cycles, like, okay, at some point, when do we take a look at ourselves? So as long as you play victim, you won't own a part in your healing. We have to take responsibility and accountability for our healing yeah. and, and, and forgiveness too. Lord, we have to learn how to forgive as well. So it's such a big deal. It's huge. The cycles and it's like, we can point the fingers at these exes, but like, what about me? Like, and we see all the red, we can see all the red flags in that X after the fact but like attracts like there was something in him that resonated with you that you decided to engage whatever because that man is a reflection of your self-esteem and who you were at the time where you chose him you chose that dude you chose him boo let's not this is a whole different podcast now let me not start (laughs) (laughs) that's how great we go in (laughs) <laughs> you chose them so what does that say about you what red flags that you overlook within your own self and see that's what inner healing does inner healing lets you see your own red flags come on and, and like yeah <laughs> <laughs> no but that is so true because we, you know come on we know we know and i've been there too with they this that until you take that responsibility you know, you will always, you'll be going in the circle and, you know, I'll never forget. Um, and I know, and, and this is one of my things too, I had to learn. I'm, I hate to see people stuck, but I have to realize not to cast my pearls to swine. And I remember a girlfriend of mine, mm. to be honest, I knew that marriage wasn't going to work, but I would never, that's not my place to say, especially when you're single, people are like, oh, she's hating or whatever, you know, but her mother had said, I can't stand him. And I want to be like, girl, me neither too. But I had to, <laughs> not so much stand him, but I saw some things too, but that was confirmation. Anyway, long story short, they were married less than a year, maybe a year, I don't know. And they were divorced. And so I don't want to see people repeating the cycle, repeating. So I said, what would you have done differently? What was the lesson? Mm-hmm. And she was just like, nothing. Like, I said, okay. Really? So I had to just dust my heels, dust my shoes off and keep it moving because and if you don't feel you did anything wrong, then. You're not ready. Some, some people are not ready. They haven't hit a pain threshold or pain tolerance level. They have to repeat, go one more trip around that mountain and attract another person just like their ex. Wow, the this different body, same spirit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow, this is good. We can, we can come back and do a part two just on relationships. I just wanted this yeah. this podcast episode to be about you and your journey as an inner healing entrepreneur and just to get your perspective. But it's been a delight to talk to you. And you said you dropped a lot of wisdom. I'm gonna be extracting these nuggets and wisdom. And we're going to be sharing this on Instagram. And I just appreciate you coming out here. Thank you for having me. Such an honor. You know, so funny because, you know, you say get real with this infectious smile. Like, you know, you kind of hit them where it hurts. or punch you right in the chest with a smile. Like, but we need to hear that. We need to hear that, you know, because if you really want to get healed, you do have to get real with yourself and, and definitely unpack some things. And, you know, Holy Spirit reveals some things about me. that I was like, Ooh, yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? That can be ugly, but you know, he, he, uh, reveals to heal. Yes. So if he's showing it to you, then it can be like, you know, at first I'm like, ouch, but yeah. take it ouch and keep on moving forward, you know, cause it's yeah. not, and he showed me even in that, example that I gave you earlier 
where I told you with that being betrayed, but Holy Spirit had me look and see, see what part did I play? Uh-huh. And so it allowed me to be compassionate, like, okay, not saying what the condone what they did, but it became, it gave me compassion for them as well, because, you know, sometimes we have to see, okay, this is why they reacted. And this is why we have to pray for those that um, just spitefully use us or wrongfully accuse us, whatever it is, because I always pray. Well, oh, excuse me, let me not. I try to be consistent in praying, Lord, help me to see your sons and daughters as you see them. Because a lot of times we see people as um, people, right? We're not looking at the spirit that's operating. We're looking at them in the flesh. So when we're mm-hmm. looking at them from a carnal standpoint, you know, we it's easy to want to clap back or, yeah. you know, get revenge or whatever. But, you know, it hasn't been an easy road. But had I not went through that, not to say I would ever want to go through that again, mm-hmm. but I wouldn't be here before you. So I thank God for the journey and I know yeah. that. Just know, and I just want to speak to those that maybe have been through betrayal or just feel stuck in any one of those areas, <clears throat> yield yourself to Holy Spirit and definitely reach out to those that, um, you know, have been down that walk, you know, whether it's, you know, uh, Tanika or myself, or, you know, you have to be willing to do the work, essentially. That's what it boils down to. Yes, the work, the work, work. we know it. (laughs) Do the work. Amen. Amen. Well, again, it has been a delight to talk to you and just have you here. And uh, so you'll know when this episode comes out, but I just really, really appreciate you. And this concludes our um, episode session. And (laughs) it's just been a blessing. So blessings and abundance to you all. We'll be back out here again soon and take care.